Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Meyer. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Inside Michigan Basketball. Only one game to dive into this week, but it was against a team that is always a unique challenge. Iowa, the top scoring team in the Big Ten. The Wolverines and Hawkeyes only scheduled to meet once this season. The Wolverines won in Iowa City last year and split their last four trips to Carver Hawkeye Arena. Early on, Jet Howard was dropping rainbows. The freshman hit a trio of three pointers before the first media timeout. So fun to watch when he's shooting with that kind of confidence. Zings it right corner, Jet Howard another three, another make. Jet's got all eight for the maize in blue, they're up eight five. Both offenses were flowing early, and Chris Murray was nearly matching Jet bucket for bucket. The Big Ten's second leading score scored 15 of his team high 27 in the first half. Then watch Doug McDaniel use his quicks, turning defense to offense, a swipe and score for the freshman from DC. And Jet just kept filling it up. She get two point lead, Jet Howard, 25 footer is good. Oh, Jet Howard, unlimited range. Wolverines by five. He knocked down two more trays, hitting five of six in the first half. The Hawkeyes keeping pace though. Off a block, they look to run. And DeSante Bolin scores the layup in transition. In the half court, the Maize and Blue worked the pick and pop play. Hunter Dickinson never shy, stretching the floor with a deep ball. Late in the half, Connor McCaffrey gets isolated on Hunter, and he pops off a three-pointer. Iowa grabbing its first lead at 40 to 39. But Jet got it back in a hurry. He scores on the runner and equaled his career high of 21 by the break. Michigan up 43 to 40 in a high scoring affair. Second half, Iowa goes on a 9-1 run. Murray, whose dad Kenyon started Battle Creek Central doing his thing in the open court. But you know who wasn't having it. Jet showing he can put it on the slab. At the point, zigzags inside, takes it strong, laid it up over the front of the rim. 31 for Chet. Michigan got key contributions from the bench. Will Cheddar, who grew up about three hours north in Minnesota, with one of the team's 14 three-pointers, it put him up by 10. The Hawkeyes get it to within two, but Michigan answers. Hunter kicks it out to McDaniel, who buries it from the top. Doug with a dozen. With 2.19 to play, the Wolverines look to be in good shape. Takes it inside with five, leans the floater, no mm. tap in, Dickinson, Michigan by seven. Dickinson had 12 points and 13 boards. But Peyton Sanford rallied the Hawkeyes. He scored 11 points down the stretch, 20 ticks on the clock, he gets fouled on a three-pointer. The four-point play ties the game at 79 and sends it to overtime. The Hawkeyes owned OT. Sanford scoring seven of their 14 in the extra frame. Iowa rallies late to stun the maize and blue, 93 to 84. This one hurt, you know, we was, we was up down the stretch and the fact that we couldn't put it off, it definitely hurts. And, you know, I guess all we could do is learn from it. You know, we can't get that game back, it's over with. So we just gotta watch film and learn from it on to the next game. We knew coming in that they're a high scoring team. They wanted to run and gun and, they weren't really a, a half-court team. They wanted to get all their buckets in transition, but we just, um, we try to limit um, their transition buckets. We try to limit the up and down scoring, but it didn't work in our favor today. And next time we play them, we hope for a different result. The Wolverines say they came up short defensively and gave an honest assessment. I feel like it's our lack of focus. You know, it's 30 seconds on the shot clock. You know, we are locked in for the first 10, for the first 20 seconds, and in that last 10, I feel like we have a low. We get caught ball watching because, you know, time is ticking down to the last shot. And, you know, we get caught on them back screens and them flare screens and stuff, and it showed tonight. You know, they hit some big time shots and big time moments. I just feel like it's, it's two parts of the game, offense and defense, and when one falls short, uh, it's always a chance that you lose, so we just got to pick up the defensive part of the part of the ball. The Hawkeyes' frenetic finish gave them all of the momentum at the end of regulation. Going to overtime, you know, we always felt good about it because at that point it's zero-zero game restart. Uh, they got the tip, you know, they got, you know, quick buckets and score, and, you know, after the momentum, they got the crowd into it, and it's just hard to fight back from that when you got guys on the floor competing and the crowd getting into it, so it's just hard to fight back, and, you know, their momentum led them to the win today. You know, you just find an uphill battle, you know, they're so motivated, they're so 
locked into the game, but we have to be at the same intensity, at the, at the same motivation. And, you know, we just, we just weren't. Um, and, you know, we got to get better. So much more season to play. Um, Michigan fans, don't write us off. That's all I got to say. Sunday, a 12-win Northwestern team comes to Chrysler Center. The Wildcats off to a great start this year, like the Wolverines, 3-2 and two in the Big Ten, and they own a couple of impressive road wins at Michigan State and at Indiana. Still to come, a sit-down interview with Kobe Bufkin, and we'll check out game day with the Wolverine women. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Meyer. Make savings a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup. Our Elro Steel Man of the Week is Jet Howard, who scored a career high 34 at Iowa. Impressive enough, but it was the way he did it. Jet scored the team's first 11 points and tied his previous best of 21 by halftime. The freshman knocked down seven of 11 three pointers in the highest scoring game by a Wolverine since Daniel Horton scored 34 in March of 2006. I'd rather us just all get 10, 10, 10, 12, 15 and come out with the dub. Um, I noticed I had uh, um, some more opportunities out to go and be aggressive and it worked out for me today. And, um, you know, I just wish that we came out with the win. Our conversation with head coach Jawan Howard is brought to you by Meyer. Make savings a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup. Here's Brian Bush. Coach, we all knew that Iowa has a ton of offensive threats. How did Peyton Sanford and his big second half and overtime really sway this game? Our lack of being disciplined, lack of awareness that we presented out there on the floor. Um, all we worked on in the last three days uh, did not have a carryover for the guy that we always pointed out who could make shots, who we do not suppose to let, allow open, and we just gave him anything that he wanted, anything that he wanted. And that's unacceptable. I don't care. That's unacceptable. And that's not the way how we practice it, and that's not how we supposed to guard it. Offensively, that kind of kept you guys in this game. What was working for your team on the offensive end? Well, offensively, uh, when we shared the basketball, you know, um, when we went through Hunter, you know, we made good opportunities uh, for Jet. Uh, Jet was extremely aggressive. Uh, unfortunately, the 13 turnovers hurt us, uh, which we gave them extra possessions on. Uh, the offensive re rebounding really hurt us, which we gave them extra possessions on 14. Um, Lack of awareness, lack of effort. It's, it's not anything that we could have done offensively. Everything on the defensive end would really hurt us. What will be important then to try to fix that? Is it film work? Is it stuff in practice? Because I, I, it's a quick turnaround. I would say get some sleep, get some sleep, get some rest. We're back to the work. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, frustrating loss, a game the Wolverines certainly feel they should have closed out. I tell you what's not frustrating, the play of sophomore Kobe Bufkin. We'll chat with him later in the show. MSU Michigan is probably the biggest in-state rivalry across the country. They come in ready to punch us and we come back with the same type of energy. They're going to want to come in here and try and punch us in the face, but um, we don't want to take that and we're going to punch him right back. Greetings on this Saturday afternoon from inside Chrysler Center, Michigan, Michigan State. I have a tremendous amount of pride um, in our team, but also in the state of Michigan and the opportunity that two great teams get to play and have this type of rivalry. Back out to Layla Filia, top side Brown, five to shoot. Leah for the deep three from the bottom of the block, and it's good. Lolan back outside Filia, left point, triple, splash. Here comes Wiggins on the run. Wiggins against Hageman, kick out Filia, extra pass, Nolan for three, splash. Oh, that was a pretty fast break. 20 to 15, Michigan. Brown top of the key, behind the back dribble, down the lane. Off glass, and one! Wiggins runs it ahead against McDaniel. Wide open underneath Williams. Beautiful pass. And a left-hand finish for Cam. Double-digit lead for the first time today for Michigan. Fakes the three on Osmond. Leaves it for Leah. Three seconds. Top of the key pull-up. Yes. Leah Brown beats the horn again. Layla 
top of the circle. Right side drive, dish back Nolan, wide open three, splash. Wiggins leaves it for Brown at the free throw line. Nice pass, wide open, Kaiser on the doorstep for an easy deuce. 48-39, Michigan. Hobbs takes a pass, runs over Jordan, offensive foul. Leah Brown across the top of the lane, no look in the corner, Hobbs catch and shoot three, splash! Puts Michigan up a dozen. Parks back and in across the lane, left hand scoop and score. What a move by Emily Kaiser. Round to the top of the key, no look lob corner right. Hobbs from the corner pocket. Swish. 63-46, largest Michigan lead at 17. Back left side, Nolan. Three up, three in. The Michigan Wolverines. Knock off Michigan State for the second straight time in this building. What an unbelievable crowd we had today. What an unbelievable atmosphere. What a great game for the young girls in the state to see Michigan, Michigan State, the amazing young women um, put on a game like they did today. More than 10,000 fans saw eight Wolverines put up points against the Spartans. Four in double figures with Leah Brown leading the way with 17. I think it was just a 40 minute battle today. Um, just, you know, the tougher team was gonna win. Second half, I think we, we won some of those. We got some charges, um, cleaned up the board a lot better. and you know, pulled it out. We just had confidence. I think our bench players really stepped up today. You had Ari coming in, you had Jordan coming in, Elise, Kyra, they came in and played huge minutes for us um, when we were in foul trouble or whether someone needed a break um, and they didn't let up on the defensive end or the offensive end. People were able to step up and make plays. Maddie hit a few big shots there at the end to really open it up. Jordan hit a few big shots. Um, Ari Wiggins came in, gave us, gave us great minutes at the point guard spot. So um, yeah, I think it's good momentum to go into our next game for sure. Michigan has won five of the last six games against MSU, and the rivals will meet again on February 5th in East Lansing. The Wolverines only have one game this week, and it's on the road at Rutgers on Thursday night. You can catch that on the Big Ten Network. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Sarah Van Meter. Thanks, Sarah. It wasn't all MSU this week. The Wolverines had a roadie Tuesday in West Lafayette, and they responded in a big way. Michigan making only its third trip to Purdue in the last six seasons. First quarter, the Wolverines jump on the Boilers with an 11-0 run to go up 13-2. Leah Brown, the bucket and the Band-Aid, great control after the contact. Here's a quick class on patience in the post. Emily Kaiser with all kinds of nifty footwork. She scored 17 and yanked down seven rebounds. Michigan by four at the bathroom break. The Wolverines outscored them 21 to nine in the third to take control. Sophomore Jordan Hobbs off the bench with a three pointer. Then just before the buzzer, Layla Felia off a miss, sticks the put back for two of her 17 points. The Mason Blue pull away to win 80 to 59. Brown scored 21 to pace the attack. On the way next, one on one with Kobe Bufkin. Inside Michigan basketball, we'll be right back. Um, like it's been a complete shift. Off the inbound, Baker right wing. To Bufkin at the point, take the pass inside, takes it in all the way. Tough Baker, yes, and a foul. We need him to, to be Kobe. Um, you know, with such a young team, you know, we are really asking our younger players to step up and play uh, big roles for our team. And, and he's one of them. And um, I think he's embraced that challenge. And he's even went to coach and asked for the toughest defensive assignments against some teams. So he's really embracing being a leader and, and being a guy that you can depend on on this team. Bufkin has made great strides between his freshman and sophomore seasons. And when we sat down to chat, the first thing I asked him was about his physical transformation. When I came in the door um, as a freshman, I was 169. And um, when I started th the year this season, um, I was 192, I believe, 192. So it's been quite a transformation. You lead the team in minutes and steals. You're third on the team in scoring. Where have you improved the most? Uh, I think on the defensive end, um, knowing where to be and when to be there was a big thing for me. I'm um, not trying to make up for my teammates' mistakes. I feel like I was trying to take everything away. 
and uh, I just kind of found my niche and I was able to capitalize on some of the mistakes that the other team made. How much of a process was that? Big process. Um, I feel like when I came in, I kind of knew what to do, I was just trying to do too much and then not having the physical ability to do what I wanted to do kind of held me back. So now that all those, all those pieces are starting to come together, it's been an easy process. You have 10 double-digit games this year. How confident do you feel? Because you look a lot more confident. Uh, a lot more confident. Um, me, and Juwan had, me and Coach Juwan have had many talks, and um, he just tells me to be smart and make the right play. And um, those plays just happen to lead to bucket opportunities and opportunities for my teammates as well. This team is so young. How has your role shifted in a very short amount of time that you've been here? <laughs> uh, I feel like I've taken on, obviously, barely playing last year. And then, like you said before, being one of the most high-minute guys, um, I feel like it's been a complete shift. But um, it was something I was prepared to take on, and I'm happy the opportunity presented itself. Going back to last year, what was it like reaching the Sweet 16? It was a, it was a hell of an experience. Um, even not playing, just seeing what it took to get there and how much those little mistakes matter on the court. And um, it was just good to be there and see it. And hopefully we can get there and farther this year. You're presumably named after Kobe Bryant. One of your brothers is named Isaiah. How big of basketball fans are your folks? Oh, my folks are, are a hell of a basketball fans. Um, I come from a basketball background. Um, my dad played in college. My mom was more of a volleyball, but I still got some of her athleticism and she's still in love with the game. Um, Kobe Bryant was her favorite player. So she says that's not why I'm named Kobe, but like I said before, I, I feel like that is. And then I have an older, older brother named my oldest brother. His name is Michael. So Michael, Isaiah, and Kobe. It's hard to say that it's not, that's not the reason, but we're gonna let them have that story, I guess. How do you emulate NBA players? I pay attention a lot to uh, Devin Booker, uh, a Grand Rapids native. So um, I feel like I can find pieces from him. Um, obviously Kobe, a legend, so, but mainly Devin Booker is who I watch the most. Has this Michigan basketball experience been everything you expected it to be? Mm -hmm. For sure, and more. Um, the connections I've made with alumni and, and, and people that have came through here has been amazing. Welcome back. We're diving into hockey to wrap up the show. Last week, Michigan freshman and proud Canadian Adam Fantilli scored the game-winning goal against the U.S. at the World Junior Semifinals in Halifax, Nova Scotia. His club went on to claim the gold medal with an overtime win over the Czech Republic. It's really hard to put into words like how it, how it feels to play in front of that crowd, to win on home soil. Um, it was, it was really special. I mean, we learned a lot. Um, I'm really, really happy with the outcome. Team USA, with five Wolverines dotting the roster, took home the bronze medal. And team captain Luke Hughes had the goal of the tournament. He spins, gets knocked down, and still manages to fire at home. Six Wolverines came home with medals, the most ever for the program at a single World Juniors. Ultra proud of uh, Adam winning the gold and the rest of the guys winning the bronze. And uh, I thought they were all putting positions to do well, and uh, they they took advantage of it. It was fun to watch. I felt like a fan watching those guys. It was really cool. After all of that, the Wolverines reconvened and jumped back into Big Ten play with a top ten battle against number eight Ohio State. After falling 7-2 Friday night, the Wolverines responded with a tremendous all-round effort in Game Two. 7.23 mark, sophomore Mackie Samuskevich works through the neutral zone and lets it rip. His team leading 13th, all square at one. Jump all the way to the third, holding a 3-2 lead, the Wolverines cash in on the power play. Just under four to go, freshman Rutger McGrory takes a pass from Luke Hughes and buries it. 4-2 the final as Michigan earns a weekend split with the rival Buckeyes. This is a huge stretch for hockey. This weekend, they're on the road to take on number two, Minnesota. You may recall the Gophers took two at Yost back in November when the Wolverines were decimated by illness and injury. For basketball, it's at Maryland Thursday, home Sunday against Minnesota as they try to sweep the season series from both the Terrapins and the Golden Gophers. We'll see you next time right here on Inside Michigan Basketball. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Meyer. 
Make savings a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup.